Hi, John here. I just want to do a short video today about transformers. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the website and then I'm going to click on this full screen 3D model here. This is what they call a hermetic oil transformer. And then we're just going to wait a little while and the model should load up. Okay, so there we've got the hermetic oil field transformer. And what I want to do, I'm just going to show you guys how it looks when it's exploded. That's it there. And we're going to talk through some of the components. I'm not going to go into transformer theory today. All I want to do is talk about each of the components and how they all fit together to make a transformer. So first, let's actually assemble it. And we'll go around the outside of the transformer and talk about some of the parts. Now, as you can see, the transformer itself is a tank. We can see here this green tank and it's actually full of fluid. Now normally it'll be full of mineral oil although it can also be full of synthetic oil or maybe silicone or something like that but the majority of them are actually mineral oil and the mineral oil cools the transformer and it also insulates the transformer from the casing. I know it's kind of strange that you would have a liquid or a fluid inside the transformer running next to electrical cabling etc. I was actually quite shocked when I found that out the first time but apparently it's totally normal and there's a good reason for that as I've explained just. So we'll have a look now around the tank. You can see here there's some cooling fins. These cooling fins are to dissipate heat so they'll be air cooled. That means as the air is passing over the fins due to natural convection the heat from the oil inside will be taken away. So that's the base of the tank, that's the tank and the heat exchanger on the side. So we discussed how it can be cooled and what the fluid's doing inside. You can see we've got these two markings on the bottom of the transformer. Let's just see if I can straighten it up a second. These markings here can be used for forklifts so that they can pick the transformer up. Although often what you will also see is wheels on the base here and you can drop the transformer into position and push it back into where you, where you need it. So let's go up to the top again. Right, what have we got here? We've got a oil filling cap. That's this section here where we would, I keep saying oil, what I should actually say is fluid. So we'll say a fluid insulating medium would be poured in here. If I do say oil, I do apologize. It's just that oil is normally what they're full of. So the fluid will be poured into here, the fluid insulating medium. We have these lifting sections here, or these lifting eyes. That's to maneuver the transformer. You can also pick it up with a crane, etc. Not just moving around with a forklift. Obviously, we've got nuts and bolts in the top to form a seal. We have these Christmas tree style pieces of equipment on the top here. These are actually called bushings. And what's happening is there's a cable coming in the bottom and you need to get the cable out, which is, say it terminates here or is around here. The cable's going to come through here and then you'll want to connect it to the top. Or sometimes what you'll actually do is connect it at the base and then a piece of rod will go through here and you can make another connection at the top. And what you're actually doing is getting the electricity out without raising the potential of the casing. What you don't want to do is you don't want the cabling touching the side of the tank. This will be disastrous because then you'll be raising the tank's electrical potential to the same potential of the cabling, which could be 10,000 volts. So you want to get the voltage out and you want the current to flow through the bushing and come out here and then go to the electrical consumer or the electrical grid. So the bushing essentially is only there to stop raising the potential of the tank. In other words, you're insulating the cable from the tank. And you'll see we need to do that on each phase. There's three phases on this transformer. One, two, three. And each of these three phases has to come out of the transformer without raising the potential of the tank. These are high voltage bushings. I can tell this straight away because the connections are a lot smaller on this side here than they are on the other side here. As a rule, 
when you have a lower voltage you will have a higher current I'm not sure if you've ever worked on a car before but you'll notice that the battery cables are quite thick even though the voltage is quite low the reason is you draw a lot of current quickly but you don't need much voltage and that's what's happening here we've actually got a higher voltage here on this tip of the bushing so this is the high voltage side and we've got a low voltage on this side so low voltage high current so the plate is thicker whenever you have a high current you're going to need a larger connection so smaller connection higher voltage lower current larger connection lower voltage higher current now if we go further out I suppose we should have a look on the other side just as you've got the high voltage connections in the background here you've got low voltage connections here that's what these big metal plates are they're big and they're made of metal because they need to conduct a lot of electricity and they also need to dissipate a lot of heat so that's why you have large connections reduce the resistance and reduce the likelihood of actually damaging this part due to the high current so that's the low voltage bushings here and notice that on this side there's four and that's because you have three phases one two three and then you have a neutral connection on the other side there isn't a neutral is just three phases let's have a look see what else we've got on this tank on the transformer this here is a temperature gauge so you're monitoring the temperature of the oil if the temperature spikes or goes too high then you can trip the transformer and shut it down or you might set off an alarm and then you can take some sort of corrective action inside here there may also be a gas actuated relay and what's happening here with the gas actuated relay and I'll explode it now because I think we've done most of the outside there will be a fluid insulating medium in this tank here if you should have an electrical fault or a short circuit or anything like that it will actually cause a gas bubble and this gas bubble will then rise to the top and it will go in here and actuate a gas relay so it's kind of like a early warning system or a, a way of telling you that you have a problem inside the transformer so if you have an electrical fault it creates these little gas bubbles in the in the fluid or the insulating medium they bubble up through here and they actuate a gas relay now notice i said gas actuated relay there is also something called a buchholz relay but that's slightly different inside here you may have some form of level measurement as well and that measures the level of insulating fluid within the tank and will set off an alarm if the insulating fluid drops below a defined point it will actually also shut down the transformer if it drops too far the entire transformer i'll just assemble it again is a hermetic transformer that means it's completely closed once it's sealed you shouldn't open it back up again there's two main types of fluid insulated transformer these are hermetic as displayed here and conservator the conservator style transformer actually has a tank up here and the tank with oil in it or insulating fluid comes down here and will connect to the main tank so that's how you can tell the two apart the conservator one has a tank in the top in this sort of area here with a, with a reservoir of insulating fluid and the hermetic one is completely closed let's explode this again right so what do we have now we can see the connections i was talking about earlier that's these here one two three four five six seven and these connect to the bushings so we'll be connecting to the bushings here and then the current will be able to flow out to here where we have another connection and yeah we do all that without electrifying the entire tank the next piece we have is a core the core is this entire piece here it's these are core limbs zoom in a core limb core limb and a core limb on the bottom you have a yoke this is a core yoke and you can see they all fit together so they would all slide together and this one on the top again would drop onto the top of the limbs here in between the limbs and the yoke you can see it a bit better here i'll see if i can get them to join up oh there we go so i'll shoot around here there we go you can see now the core is joined together 
Now the core is not a solid piece of metal. It's actually many thin sheets of metal or many thin sheets of laminate metal. Each of the metal sheets is laminated so they're insulated from each other. This reduces eddy current losses which is one of the main problems with transformers or at least it would be if you didn't laminate the core you would have huge losses the transformer wouldn't be anywhere near as efficient as the transformer displayed here if i zoom in you can actually see these lines each of these are thin sheets laminated so they shouldn't be coming into contact with each other and they make up the transformer core so we've got the core yoke on the bottom and top got the core limbs on the sides and in the middle and here in this empty space we actually call that the window or the core window let's explode out fully again what else do we have here we have connections on the top now this is the one part of the transformer that is not displayed correctly but i didn't want to sort of confuse or muddy the waters here so i made the windings which is see this dark zoom right in the dark winding here on the inside that is a low voltage winding low voltage windings are always the windings closest to the core and on the outside is a high voltage winding they don't actually look like this in the transformer they're not normally round they're more rectangular and there's a lot more of them but i think this represents or it shows a lot more how the transformer works than if we did it another way where you wouldn't be able to see much so you can see the winding coming in here it carries on it winds all the way down and the hv winding wraps around it and again these are insulated from each other you'll use a paper insulation and the paper insulation is wrapped normally but not always by hand i was quite surprised i visited a factory where they make transformers and there's a man there or there was a man there and he was wrapping each of these windings in paper by hand I was actually very impressed is there anything else in the transform we need to talk about i think generally that is it that's each of the main parts for a hermetic transformer i encourage you to go to the website and have a look yourself i'll assemble it again if we back out i can show you guys a few more features which might help you learn a bit more about the transformer and explain it a bit better than i have in this video maybe you can see again hermetically sealed fluid insulated transformer so don't always assume it's going to be oil as i say some of them are i don't know maybe vegetable oil or silicone or something like that there's a lot of different fluids you can use but mineral oil is predominantly the fluid that you will use and there we go this one is animated but we also annotated it we can see here the numbers and i synced the annotations to the text on the right so laminate steel core upper yoke and you can see on the right there's a bit more information there that you can read about back out again if you want to help us out please do like or share the video on facebook or twitter or youtube or anything like that and if you really want to support us please do check out our patreon page thank you very much for your time